What's Christ, Mike Michael Wacken, your Yoga Pilot, coming at you with another MLB The Show video. Today, going over stuff to avoid day one. Hey, everyone, I'm Dan Plezak, and welcome to MLB and The, the Show. there's the welcome mes me message, because I just opened up the game to record this, because I am not trying to play this game anymore, except for tonight when I do my final game. And when I do the big pack opening following it, you see I have 400,000 stubs, and I still have some stuff to sell through the binder. Going to be way more packs than I was expecting, but... It's something to do while I'm, otherwise I'm just going to sit here waiting for the time to tick by. And I'll be honest, a lot of the stuff you want to avoid doing, oh, let me start in the store. If I filter my live series, avoid buying live series diamonds. The low ones, that is. Like these 80, all these guys down here. Who, some of whom might not even be diamonds, like your pro Sunny Gray probably won't be a diamond. Randy Rosarena probably won't be a diamond. Marte probably won't be bucks, and I'm on the. I'm kind of not sure about him. If he's a diamond, that card's going to be crazy expensive. He's going to be an 85 diamond, he's going to cost like 30,000, but. That's how all diamonds are the first night. Night one, the only diamonds you should even consider getting. Are like the Mike Trout, the Jake DeGroms, Mookie, Freeman, the 90 pluses. Trout specifically is like the one guy I would look at and say, okay, maybe. Because a lot of the high guys tend to go upwards. And the only way you're going to be able to afford these cards if you spend like, it's going to be like $100 for Mike Trout. That's usually around what it costs night one. And then it steadily goes up for a few months. We'll eventually start going down again. <laughs> Last year it was similar for the other guys. They just all started at a lower point and went up slower. Like Jake DeGrom is going to be another really expensive card. That's for all these guys who are still up here in the 90s, except maybe Verlander, because I'm not sure what they're going to do with him after he missed the entire year. And then these guys who are actually 90s might not be this year. So you get the point. Don't buy the low diamonds when they're overpriced. Unless you're spending so much on the game, you're finishing the collections. Like, unless you are finishing the MLB collection tonight, night one, which is absolutely insane, but good for you. Unless you're going to finish that collection tonight, or tomorrow morning, whatever you want to consider it, you are going to be wasting all of your stubs. Equipment, franchise, basically... Honestly, there's not much to buy night one, but I'll go over the one thing that I would make a slight exception to in my video later tonight. Once we get more information about some specifics, I'm going to be doing a video about what to do first. When it comes to collections, programs, future programs, you're going to have, not the ultimate, you're going to have the first inning. Just see if there's any, like, missions in here, so you, if you go online or something, if you do decide to play online for some reason you know what to do or you know what specific challenges are asking you and that goes for everything like team affinity this past year they had missions for every team tally hits with orioles and fielders just check to see what the missions are this was stage one last year for Baltimore check what the missions are for any team who might have a player you're interested in like I want Salvador Perez I'll be honest there's not usually many great catches early game Three extra, that's stage four. Stage one, extra base hits with row a second base shortstop or right field. Who is that? Whit Merrifield, Otto, Berto, Mondesi, or Jorge Soler, I think. So, if they do something similar, go through the missions and just see what each, t whatever players you're looking for, at least the one you want the most, and consider that when you're making your lineup. Like, if you happen to have, like, a silver guy of one team compared to another, throw in the one who helps you get a mission done. But in general, you want to see like, if there are any player programs at launch, and maybe we have Evolution again, maybe we have Starter. Just go through and see what you have to do to get the rewards, because these rewards don't look great, and I'll be honest, they are not the best rewards I've ever seen, but a gold first baseman who can play third, left, and right, I, I mean, he's not great, but night one, when you're opening up this game and all you have to build your team are your pre-order packs, a gold card might do you something, or a silver card with specific stats, or maybe doing these collection UTXP gets you leveled up, earns you something decent. Like you're in a 
gold legend pack. My point being, check the missions, check the programs, just see what you have to do. And for what not to do uh, specifically, my advice would be do not play online, rank season specifically. Do not play rank seasons until you have a team you are comfortable with. Do not try to go in with your all starter team and be like, oh yeah, I can win a gamer with your team that's just pre-order packs because most of the people playing night one are going to be people who spent some money on the game and have a lot of cards that most of you listening to this probably won't have. Other things not to do, my main two pieces of advice would be avoid buying cards, especially diamonds, low diamonds. Really, the only thing I would recommend buying is if you have any high rise series diamonds and you're spending money and you can afford them. Which would... Another thing that kind of goes along with not buying the low guys, sell them off. Like, if I pull Giancarlo Saint and say he's like an 85, 86, 87... He is going to be more expensive night one than he probably will be the rest of the year. He is not going to do drastically better than a gold outfielder. Let's see if I can find a gold outfielder who's better than him. Or close enough to him. Teoscar Hernandez, compared to Stanton. He's 23 speed faster, better contact against righties, like 10 less power. Fielding's not a huge difference, like 5 to 10 lower on every stat. Considering this guy will be a gold and probably cost like 5000 compared to like 25000 I'd pay the 5000 for Day Oscar. Honestly, I'm going to try to avoid buying any players, really in general, from live series on night one. But if you feel the need to, go after the guys like this, the golds or the silvers that have really good stats. Like, if you want to bat, go with Eloy Jimenez. He's going to be cheaper because he's going to be a lower gold at best. Which means you can get him for Joey Gallo's gold card, always another option. If you care about fielding but not... If you got a good job hitting with the PCI, Joey Gallo. Not great speed, but he has great power. So if you square up that ball, it's going to go far. You get down to silvers and bronze, you're starting to grasp at straws a little bit, especially in left field, which is not a very deep position. Schwarber. Schwarber's a bronze budget option, really. 88 power versus righties. I know everything else doesn't look bad, but you're buying a bronze. You should not be expecting the world. And honestly, those are my two main pieces of advice. Do not buy players, really, do not buy live series players in general, because most of them are going to go down in price within a week or two, and you'll be able to get by without them, I guarantee it. <laughs> The other one is don't play online, specifically, especially ranked seasons, until you have a team that you are comfortable with. Because I could roll out with my pre-order pack squad and probably get killed by some guy who has Mike Trout and Jake DeGrom. And I'll just be sitting here going, this guy spent $200 on those two cards alone. And then the rest of his team's also diamonds. No, but if there's an event in the game, check out what it is consider that if you're interested in events consider that when you're building your team to start it off showdown showdown's a great mode to play it's against the computer you don't need to have a great team and the starter one last year was free conquest great mode to build your team br you get one for free so it's not the worst thing in the world you get one free draft every year at least that's what they've always done before now so maybe consider it moments i'm always going to advise moments in any situation Look at the program, see what they tell you to do. Don't buy live series players. Don't overpay would be the general thing. And don't collect anything unless you're finishing a collection. That's actually a really big one. I can't believe I stepped over it for so long. Don't go into here and be like, oh, well, I pulled my Florida packs. I got a, I pulled Jose Iglesias. I don't even think he's on the Orioles anymore. But... Or maybe he is now, but he wasn't last year. It's not a big deal either way. Don't collect him and then have 39 empty spots. Seriously, don't do not do that. <laughs> um, thank you all for watching. 
If you enjoy this, make sure to like and subscribe. Coming later tonight around 8 p.m., a video about what to do first. I might have brushed on that slightly in this video because it's hard to talk about what not to do without mentioning what to do. Come back later tonight for my final game on MLB 20 and me opening any, every pack I have. 100 balls a habit and as many handlers as I can afford. That should get us close to, if not, if I get within a few minutes of 12 o'clock, I'm going to close the stream out early to avoid potentially being late onto the new game. And then I'll open up the new game, and hopefully the rest of you will be playing with me. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, the best is yet to come.